spend Boxing Night at the movies on ITV and you'll have a smashing time. This is serious. This is war. And it's war at 1210 when the Magnificent Seven ride again. You're either a very stupid or a very brave man, senor. One word from me and you would be dead. And more top guys are in action down under. Oh, man. Yes, as a matter of fact, I am. That's Boxing Night at the Movies. This is Thames Television from London. Now, from ITN, the latest news with Nicholas Owen. The news from ITN. British Gulf commander warns Iraq may strike at any time. Saddam says no compromises on dates or territory. Gorbachev gets powers for direct rule of republics. And Desi, out on his own and back on winning form. Good evening. The commander of the British forces in the Gulf, Sir Peter de la Billiere, has told his troops to prepare for a preemptive strike by Iraq before January the 15th, the deadline for President Saddam to leave Kuwait. In another development, the US State Department has ordered all its non-essential personnel to get out of Jordan immediately. For General Sir Peter de la Billiere, nervous days lie ahead. The commander of the British forces in the Gulf was today on a post-Christmas tour of units. He gave the strongest warning so far that President Saddam Hussein might launch a preemptive strike before the UN deadline. If he decides that he's going down the military road, then he will try to take a military initiative, and that initiative could well happen before the 15th of, of, of January. So there's nothing sacrosanct about the 15th of January in military terms. The British deployment is on schedule. The armour for the 4th Brigade now lined along the dockside. The armoured personnel carriers will soon be moved to the desert. Today it was confirmed by military intelligence that Iraq was still strengthening its grip on Kuwait with sophisticated defences. Out in the Gulf, HMS Brazen, which had just left this Saudi port, together with US warships, boarded an Iraqi freighter. Inspection showed it was breaking the embargo, trying to smuggle food supplies past the Allied navies. Robert Moore, ITN, Saudi Arabia. Continuing pressure from UN-backed forces in the Gulf has brought no change of tone from Baghdad. Meeting Jordanian politicians, President Saddam remained defiant. He told his guests that any withdrawal from Kuwait must be linked to the Palestinian issue, and later stressed again that Iraq would not change its position on dates for the high-level talks proposed by President Bush. After the United Nations set its deadline of January the 15th, the Americans said talks must be before January the 3rd. Iraq suggested January the 12th. Today, Israeli sources were reporting a compromise date of January the 9th. In Tel Aviv, Israel's defense minister has told journalists he's confident his country can withstand a preemptive strike by President Saddam's forces. He has the ability, he has missiles uh, that have a range uh, to reach Israel, but I think his capability of hurting Israel significantly is very limited. Tonight, as American servicemen celebrate Christmas as best they can, the U.S. State Department advised all non-essential embassy staff and families to leave Jordan as soon as possible. A further sign of increasing tension as the January deadline approaches. President Gorbachev has been given the power he wanted to rule by decree which he hopes will turn the Soviet Union round. The Soviet Parliament voted to give him direct control of the 15 republics and the country's economy. But it's still to approve his choice of vice president, Gennady Yanayev, an old-style conservative. Mikhail Gorbachev is now, in theory at least, the most powerful ruler of his country since the Tsar was overthrown in the 1917 revolution. Parliament today completed a series of constitutional amendments which give him the right to rule by decree without any legislative checks and balances. For his part, Mr. Gorbachev named the man he wants as vice president. He's Gennady Yanayev, who despite pledging his support for economic reform, is seen as a Communist Party conservative and further evidence of Mr. Gorbachev's move to the right. The future of Prime Minister Nikolai Rishkov, last seen here yesterday, is now in even greater doubt following his heart attack. He's been under intense pressure to resign. 
and more evidence of tension in the Baltics today. The commander of the Soviet fleet there warned that servicemen might have to use arms to defend their families against extremists. Nationalists fear that such statements are designed to justify a military crackdown. They're also afraid that despite his new powers, Mr. Gorbachev may not be able to control an army which shows signs of wanting to go its own way. Tim at ITN, Moscow. A gas rig support vessel is drifting out of control in heavy seas off Humberside tonight. An RAF helicopter is on its way to rescue the crew of 15. Tomorrow's weather could be the worst of the current stormy spell. Doctors hoping to save eight-day-old Christy Strachan have had to turn down the offer of a heart from Spain because it's too big. Another baby in Europe needs a transplant too, which means a new heart for Christy will probably have to come from Britain. Surviving on a life support machine at Great Ormond Street Hospital in London, eight-day-old Christy is tonight still waiting for the chance to become the youngest ever heart transplant child. The UK transplant service turned down the offer of a heart from Spain because it was too big. Other offers came too early. During December, we had about four offers of very small donors, and some of those might have been suitable for Christy. Obviously, Christy hadn't been born then. Christie's first source for a new heart would be within the UK transplant services area, which includes Ireland. The second source would be the whole of Europe. But another baby, only three days old, needing a new heart of the same blood group, has been born within the Euro transplant area, covering the Benelux countries, Germany and Austria. The first donor heart from there will now go to this other baby. And for geographical reasons, so will any heart which becomes available in the French or Scandinavian transplant areas.